agriculture and space. And that is giving definitely a lot of impetus to the sector because this is a very, very critical sector as because it supports the food security, but more than that, it takes care of you can say livelihood about still, I think about more than 55% of India's population. And the issues and challenges are not only restricted to India, we work in a few other countries as well, like Bangladesh, Philippines, and four countries in Africa where we have got some of our users using our platform. We see very, very similar issues, uh, large cluster of small and uh, what you called marginal farmers. The food value chain is broken, very little data coming out of the process and thereby it's not, it is a significant lack of efficiency which drags the sector down. So I'll just start by sharing my screen. Yeah, so is my screen visible, Ami? Uh, yes, sir. Not yet, but uh, yes, sir. Now it's it should visible. come shortly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, IoT as possibly this Internet of Things, where we use internet to send data from various points of devices through cloud, and that data helps us to take decisions. It has been used for long in manufacturing, where we are migrating to smart manufacturing, and it has also come I would say in a reasonable way in agriculture, still a long way to go, but the prospects are enormous. So if we really look at uh, agriculture as a space where IoT can add value in terms of efficiency and optimization, it can help to analyze crop yield and predict it beforehand so that those stakeholders who are in the procurement part of the value chain can get data early about what is the predictability of yield and they can plan things in a way. Then there are applications of spreading of pesticides in a more precision way when there is data and image coming. Then there are sort of issues of diagnosis, early diagnosis of paste and diseases, which can help in terms of mitigating risks and can actually prevent fast spreading of diseases across the farmland. Then there are issues of optimized use of water, improving fertility, monitoring the overall crop cycle, working on soil erosion, and last but not the least, create a data backbone for the entire farm cycle process and also post the farm cycle to take the right decisions at the right point of time. So uh, if we really look at the agriculture and farming industry across the world, we are expecting the world population to reach about 9.6 billion by 2050, which tells us very easily that there will be very strong demand for more food. Land is limited. So there has to be technology pushing more output out of that limited land, which is coming out today. But 83% of the farmers across developing countries in Asia, uh, Africa as well as Latin America are small animals. So there is significant lack of access to knowledge, access to data and access to information. Then we are all aware of global warming, environmental changes, which is creating new paradigm in the farm value chain. New type of pace diseases are coming, which the farmers are not aware about because their legacy knowledge has not encountered those based and diseases. Then there is dropping of workforce in the agriculture space due to urban migration and 
because agriculture is not so attractive livelihood, even the youth are drifting away. So it is creating a huge supply demand gap in the workforce. Then you have got lack of proper monitoring because farming happens in far flung places where there is issue of access and there is a significant need of large manual intervention still, especially in the developing countries. And there is huge challenge to analyze, firstly gather and analyze a very large scale unstructured data and make sense out of the data to take proactive decisions. So if we really now look at how the data comes in terms of aggregating and interpreting, it comes from ground level, the farm cycle data, which the farmers are doing, it comes from soil, it comes from IoT sensors, it comes from drones imaging, it comes from satellite imaging, and all the data gets accumulated and processed and gets converted into some algorithms where those information or advices which are meaningful for a farmer can be pushed to them and that people are hoping that that will help to mitigate risks and increase yield propensity. So now in this entire chain of capturing and interpreting data and pushing right information for the farmers, we see multiple areas where IoT is being starting to get used to now. It is all till today, very, very use case basis, like not that it is happening in a very large scale, but we are seeing a lot of interesting use cases which are happening. One we have already discussed, which is about precision and smart farming, farm management, backend analytics of data, mechanizing cultivation and harvesting where data comes from those machines and help us to take proactive decisions. And it goes beyond agriculture, even in areas like fishery, Areas like dairy, we are seeing a lot of applications happening of IoT. I will discuss a couple of use cases in that area as well. Now, now if we have to jot down the broad benefits of IoT in the agriculture and the farm value chain space, firstly, make the data work. So if we can get data in a structured form, it is more probable that those data will be analyzed and meaningful information will come out of that data, which is of business value, which is a process value, and which can help the entire ecosystem to be managed in a more efficient way. So that's the first thing is sourcing data in an organized way and making it work. Second, Early, sense, early sensing of issues and challenges, whether that issue is of temperature, humidity, soil moisture, pH factor, nitrogen content, all such stuff. The earliest we can get that hint, it helps the organizations who are in that space, either they are a contract farming company or maybe a procurement company who is into the farming process as well, to mitigate risks in a better way because they are getting a bit more time to address those risks which are being sensed. Then we are looking at automation and efficiency, basically so that a lot of decisions now get away from human intervention, which is always prone to errors and subjective judgments. And now we are seeing data helping to take those, those decisions, like say, Take an example of drip irrigation, where we are seeing a lot of applications where those pipes come from the water source and it goes straight into the root of the plants. And there are IoT sensors which can sense the soil moisture content at that point of time and can actually control the valve, whether sort of water is required at that point of time or not. So it can take away the manually driven what you called a uh, more regular way of watering, whether or not there is a need for weather for the water for the plant 
two, a more precise way of putting in water because there is sensor there who is sensing the quality or the uh, degree of moisture in that soil. And this entire issue of drip irrigation has been mostly started in, as we know possibly, it's in Israel because Israel is a very strong water scarce country. So they wanted to make every drop of water work. So used IoT and we are also seeing now more and more organizations in India starting to work with drip irrigation to at least start optimizing the requirement of water in farming. And then we come to better product quality because post raw material procurement when processing happens in areas like dairy, areas like fruits, we see IoT being used to continuously measure certain parameters and those data comes back into the system without any human intervention. And that can help the management or the people who are responsible for that process to take the decisions in a more objective way. So it can help to maintain better product quality. So just to summarize on that, as we are moving, or I would say aspiring to move to agriculture 2.0, and to meet the needs of the growing population and growing food requirements, slowly and steadily, technology experiments are being done. In India now, I think over the last two, three years, we are seeing a lot of startups working in very, very interesting areas of deep technology in certain specific sectors where they are working on meaningful solutions coming with the use of IoT, where from the field data is coming directly to the cloud and helping to take a decision. So just to recap on that, the right use and optimal use of IoT can help the farm value chain to increase efficiency, mitigate climate risks, lower costs, reduce waste, improve the quality of yield, accurately allocate just enough resources where we are talking about as a use case, the use of water, which can be significantly optimized through drip irrigation and reduce the use of pesticides and fertilizers because once we get the data about the NPK constituent in the soil, right through the sensors, it can tell you how much of fertilizer to be used rather than more of a legacy-based practice of applying fertilizers. Similar with pesticides, when now we are seeing drone images being able to analyze the paste infestation possibility and NDVI index, we, we are more and more seeing good use cases of precision pesticide application. Like you are not applying pesticide on the entire farmland, almost like a routine matter, but only applying pesticide in those areas where there is a higher propensity of pest infestation. And all these in the current term is being captured in the coin coinage of smart farming, where one issue is to be kept in mind that smart farming essentially will move slightly towards being capital intensive because you need technology, you need capital investment in terms of putting in those devices sensors across your planting area and use that capital investment to take or to achieve long-term efficiency, sustainability, and, and growth. So that's the overall journey. Still, I would say it's in a very, very early stage across the developing countries. If we talk of countries like UK, Germany, maybe you can say Netherlands, I will share a use case of Netherlands and USA and other places. They are possibly moved ahead in terms of possibly five to seven years in terms of using technology because human resource is more scarce there. And of course, technology is almost a compulsion because they don't have people to do this manual, manual work. And now with environmental issues coming up and increasing concern about greenhouse gas emission coming out of both crop farming as well as cattle farming. 
uh, IoT based smart processes can lead to a better just give me a second Yeah, is my screen back, Ami? Yes, sir, it's, it's back. Okay, 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 wonderful. So now with, as we were saying that now with increased awareness about sustainability and making farming environment friendly, more and more IoT enabled devices we feel will be used and it will possibly go right now, which is mostly used in only a few areas of the farm value chain. And we are hoping that it will propagate towards small and medium enterprises as well. Because currently, these small and medium enterprises, which forms the backbone of agriculture and farm level aggregation at the ground level, we are seeing in India a movement happening around FPOs, where the government wants to have 10,000 FPOs open by the next couple of years trying to play that role of that aggregation of the last mile. Hardly any APOs today use any technology, but the hope is that as things move, as more and more trust comes out of making the farming process sustainable, whether crop farming, horticulture, or animal farming, we will see more and more use of IoT-based smart farming. There are limitations also. We will discuss that. So now the most important issue is how do the data go from those sensors which are all over the place in the remote remote locations. Uh, of course, one solution that people are, have explored is putting in SIM cards there in the, on those devices which can send those data packet back to the cloud. And now there are also the telcos are offering IoT SIMs, those SIMs are only for data. It doesn't support voice and thereby the costs and can be kept lower. But still, because of the limitations of network and footprint of the telcos in remote areas, it always remains a challenge how much of data connectivity can possibly be achieved in those locations where Mostly the sensors have to be put in because farming typically happens away from the urban location. So it is always a chicken and egg story in different areas of IoT applications in farming. When we look at IoT applications in homes, in smart manufacturing, these issues are not there because they are mostly in urban locations where we have crossed that limitation of data connectivity. But agriculture is one area where significant challenges still remain in terms of SIM-based data connectivity. So we are now looking at some experiments happening in terms of sort of using low bandwidth data satellites, sort of working in those IoT applications using a technology called LoRa, which is basically an open standard where uh, these low low bandwidth and low data packet can be sent from the ground using satellite, not using SIEM. So what happens is that all those sensors talk to those LoRa nodes. So they send the data to the LoRa nodes and the LoRa nodes send it back to the cloud. So that works in a way that it makes the operating cost lower because there is no data cost of each of those particular sensors. And this has significant battery lifetime, five to 10 years. It can cover a range of about 10 to 15 kilometers. And so if we really look at the graph here, Wi-Fi, which has been traditionally a wireless mode of transferring data,
ऑपरेटिंग कॉस्ट कैन बी बॉट इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर फार्मिंग so now just let me share couple of actual use cases this is from actual field data from olive plantation project in 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 netherlands where one of our partners have deployed iot devices so you can see this type of data come in every day every hour in packets of say maybe intervals of 10 minutes about ambient temperature ambient humidity and ambient light this is very important for a thing like olive because olive is a very sensitive crop and even a small fluctuation of temperature humidity and light can impact the final quality of olive to a significant extent so typically the olive plantation companies are looking for iot solutions where they can remotely monitor the farm cycle and the issues arising out of things like fluctuations beyond threshold of temperature humidity and ambient light now now this is another actual field data from a coffee plantation project in munnar which is also one of our partner companies have done where you can see this is almost like a consolidated dashboard where temperature humidity uh ambient light ph factor soil soil nitrogen all these are being tracked on a daily basis and the agronomist of the plantation project can see everything in their in their dashboard and can manage that that plantation in a more effective way so i think uh, i think let me just do one thing ami has told to keep my video off so let me do that and get back because yeah so as i was coming back this is actually a dashboard from an iot project in coffee plantation where the agronomist of the plantation can see it on a daily basis and can actually take decisions based on what to do in what part of of that plantation again we have to keep it in mind that iot based data and interpretation of that it's just a tool it can help the people who are responsible for plantation responsible for uh, the management of that cropping farming cycle to take the right decisions in a more proactive manner so these are couple of examples that we have shared from crop and horticulture value chain now there are a lot of applications happening in the animal value chain primarily in the dairy sector so just this is just a schematic of a connected cow where there are use cases which are happening in different parts of the world firstly say the necklace which is possibly being done by a dutch company it is almost like that we use we use like fitbit that it almost tracks cow's movement feeding habits and it can interpret and give early sensing of health problems uh Be, 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 uh, to be able to predict what is the optimum time of insemination of a cow then there are things called acid monitor the thing things like a pedometer where different types of startups some in holland some in uk some in israel they are continuously trying to use technology and iot sensors to be able to predict the behavior or the what you call the health pattern or behavioral pattern of cow and other animals cow is most important because they are a significant industry depends on cow which is dairy so and there are also other sensors which can uh, sort of you can say predict the quality of milk and early signs of things like mastitis so the objective is to control and increase the quality of milk through iot there are also some 
use cases which are starting to happen in india there are some good startups who are working in the in the in the dairy space and using iot to make the cow behavior cow health more predictable and more data driven so that the dairy enterprises can take the right decisions and take the proactive calls by their vets so that's the cow part of it then when the milk comes and milk goes through different processes of pasteurization and other stuff we can we have seen a lot of applications of iot in terms of accurate milk parameters calibration the objective is that the quality of milk which comes out is fit for human consumption so there are a lot of iot based milk testing equipments which are available in the marketplace right now there are issues of scaling that i will come to a bit bit later which can have immense benefit for the dairy industry now let's take another use case which is actually very interesting this is being done by one of our partners in in malaysia this is in the area of fishing where they are they are using a balloon let me just try to see whether that top screen one comes down so now you can see the balloon there which is mentions airborne iot network so the balloon flies it carries the net with them and there are sensors in the lakes or the ponds or maybe the rivers where the data comes about the water quality the level of salinity and that gives that necessary information back to the fish fishing enterprises about the expectation of fishing in that particular water body because the level of salinity is extremely important to get the right type of fish output so uh, especially because there are remoteness they are using these balloons and this is actually actually a product which is being used by a company which we are working with in malaysia and they are using couple of pilots to actually work on that so also in fishery we are seeing iot is coming to create sensor based uh, health, uh what you call prediction for water water quality now let's come to some issues and challenges that iot is facing especially in agriculture uh why is agriculture important it is important because of the fact that things are remote and mostly the network of telcos have reached a point where beyond that there is an issue of viability of they are expanding the network but those are typically the locations where farming happens so poor communication infrastructure in the fields and in the farmlands in most of the developing countries is a very serious infrastructural issue which is still bugging a uh, spread of iot because the sensor or that hardware is not enough it needs continuous connectivity of data to be able to send those packets to the cloud so that the data can be accessed remotely and interpreted so this lack of infrastructure is bugging the spread of iot almost everywhere that we are currently active as i'm saying in india in philippines in bangladesh in african countries the moment you go beyond the city limits there are issues and challenges so the farm sector is not in a position to address it secondly is a high cost of equipment like those iot sensor equipment still they are very very costly because of the fact that it has not reached that scale where the manufacturing efficiency and the economy of scale can be achieved most of the sensors are still beyond the budget of an sme which we typically call it maybe a cooperative or an fpo or a small organic farm which is typically working with not more than 3 to 500 farmers it is still the hardware capex is still prohibitive 
to be able to deploy it. Of course, automated machinery, which is required for post-processing as well as dairy, is very costly. So it has always remained as a chicken and egg story where the startups who are mostly in this space of IoT, they keep on saying that we will be able to bring down our cost once we reach the scale, but it will not reach the scale till, they bring, till in some way the costs are brought down because most of the SMEs, which roughly consist of 92 to 93% of the total space of farm value chain at the aggregated layer, are not in a position to afford it. So, so far, whatever the use cases we are seeing today, the adoption has been limited to high value cash crops, like as we have given a couple of use cases, olive, coffee, maybe some high value tea gardens and things like that, and large scale plantation projects, mostly. It does not come to the normal regular crops, regular fruits, regular vegetables, because there is an issue of high capex, which is still not being cracked in this ecosystem and coupled by the lack of telecom infrastructure. So I will just end this part by just coming at the last slide, which is with the experience that we have seen over the last six, seven years in the agri-tech space across different geographical regions in the world, in the IoT space, our apprehension is that the startups will keep on struggling for a significant period of time where scaling is a challenge. It will always remain a chicken and egg issue. So possibly this sector will need the large tech hardware companies to build scale and make the sensors affordable for large scale deployment. Of course, that needs very high capex, long-term ROI, but possibly that is something which the sector will need to build that capacity first, to make the sensors affordable for the SMEs and thereby build scale and make money out of the, uh, specifically the sensor hardware, hardware part of it. And also now because the entire world is becoming more conscious about sustainability, can IoT become a tool for carbon trading? because it has a huge opportunity to optimize the natural resources, make the farm value chain process more sustainable, significantly reduce the water wastage. So can the carbon emitting companies trade and make money available for the IoT sector so that we can look at the scaling happening uh, making those hardwares more affordable because IoT at the end of the day is a hardware driven sector. Of course, there is software, there is platform, there is data interpretation, there, there is data analytics, but the source of the data is hardware. So until and unless there is large scale deployment of sensors in an affordable way, and there is connectivity happening, either through a LoRa-based satellite, low bandwidth satellite network, or low cost seams, it will sort of, it will keep on struggling and remain confined to interesting use cases. But if we really have to see very large scale deployment happening where it can start transforming the sector, making the sector more efficient, there is an issue of upfront investment, which is important and will possibly keep on bugging the sector for a period of time. So I think I will stop here the presentation part and I think now it might be more useful for seeing if there are any questions, any comments, any observations and start to address those. And if Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Tridivesh, for a very informative talk and covering the topic broadly. Uh, I think we can take uh, some questions now. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, Webho, uh, you have you had some question. You can go on. Uh, let's, okay, guys, let's take some questions. I guess that is it, sir. So, oh, yes, nice. So there's a question, nice. Yes, I can see that from yes, coming sir. from coming from Rahul. Yes, sir. Yeah, of course, means uh, this is something which I was trying to trying to highlight that there is a barrier to cost for a small farmer, or the way we see in India, the small and marginal farmers they typically hold a land size of not more than two to three acres. For an individual farmer, it is still a challenge because firstly, there is a cost of IoT hardware and also he, he needs a software access to data. So I think it has to start from the FPO level uh, because typically what we see that these FPOs are uh, being formed out of those small farmers only, but there are clusters. Like say there are 500 to 700, maybe 1,000 farmers through which the POS is being formed. So at that level, possibly there is some, what you call scale to be able to afford the IOTs. Like say, I think let's give an example. We are, we are working with uh, FPO based in Meghalaya. We have got about 600 farmers who are cultivating organic oyster mushroom so and it, it, sort of an an individual farmer won't be able to afford it but as a cluster cluster of having 600 farmers that fpo which is something like a, what you called a, a enterprise in its spirit can possibly afford it and deploy it across their farmers to be able to have a dashboard to be able to get the right sort of information. Next question from Anuradha, uh, that yes, how sir. IoT will help farmers uh, in more yield? Okay, so, so that typically the things that come out of IoT device, which are most commonly used is to get NPK data, get soil pH factor, uh, ambient temperature, ambient humidity, soil moisture content, and ambient light. There are these individual sensors have different types of types of costing. But once you get this data on a on a on a regular regular basis, it is a good backbone to be able to interpret those data and take the right decisions in terms of yields. When you're talking of yields, how does yield happen more? Firstly, you need maybe need more more phosphorus on the on the soil to be able to have more growth of your plant that's one thing the second is you may be able to predict paste or disease faster so that your probability of going for a bad crop or maybe losing part of your crop goes down so getting the information early with sensors can give you that very important time, which is that very, very critical lead time to be able to apply those right pesticides or maybe a type of soil nutrient to be able to get that yield. Sort of when we see the plant in a naked eye, sometimes we are late in times of understanding that there are soil nutrient deficiencies, micronutrient deficiencies, or there is higher probability of infestation of pests. So with both these combined, definitely IoT and not IoT, it's the interpretation of data. IoT is the device which throws data. 
So IoT is a tool again. It is that interpretation of data and converting that data into meaningful decision tools can help in terms of managing that. Uh, I think one question has come from Shatish, which will help in IoT. I have been trying to help APOs in my region through IoT and I, was, I have exact ideas. Yes, there are few enterprises that we are in touch with. So we have an end-to-end -end farm value chain platform, but we are working with different IoT providers and integrating it in our platform so that for the FPOs or enterprises, there is a seamless solution. So we can definitely connect offline and can I can possibly recommend you a couple of IoT vendors who can help you in that, in that regard. But to an extent, it depends on what type of crop that, that, that your particular FPOs are doing because there are different types of sensors which can help in different types of farm value cycle. But again, very early stage, there are good players in the market, but they are still in a very MVP stage at this point of time. So that's where we are uh, sort of the sector is struggling right now and not being able to able to scale. IoT based equipments for starting smart farming in 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 Karnataka. Yes, I know one company who who can help you in Karnataka. So I'm just sharing my mail ID. So you can just connect with me. Uh, I will be able to share those names and the other tech, technology providers in the IoT IoT space. It is possibly not fair to mention any <laughs> company here, but I will be very happy to connect with you offline and share who can be those providers whom you can touch base with in different parts of the country and uh, possibly explore that. So hope I have been able to address the comments of Anuradha, Rahul, and Shatish. Yeah. Guys, are there any more questions? Yeah, he already gave, gave. No, no, I, I think I by mistake send it to you only. So I'm just posting it for everyone. Okay. So, yes, sir, one more question. Yes, there are. Uh, as we have sort of mentioning some partner of ours who are actually have done live projects with coffee and tea plantations. There are also requirements in the tea processing area of IoT because if any one of you have exposure to the tea processing where the raw tea leaves come and get processed in those processing units, temperature and humidity are extremely important. And they typically manage those forced and induced draft fans to manage that, but all that happens manually. So there are people who see the barometer, who see the, uh, so what you call the, uh, temperature sensor every hour and put those fans off and on. So there are a lot of good use cases that can happen in the IoT space. So I'll be ha very happy to connect with you and share how we can solve your specific requirements. Okay. Uh, any more questions from attendees? Okay, so in terms of the recorded video, I think possibly Amy will be able to share yes, it. So, yes, yeah. yes, 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 I'll definitely yeah. share with you. Yeah. So I guess uh, that was it. Uh, so with this, we come to an our virtual workshop with Mr. Tridivesh. I would like to thank you again, sir, for your wonderful and insightful comments. And I'm sure audience finds the same. And I hope we can continue the interest with the audience and uh, in near future. Thank you. Sir. Yes, this, this farm value chain is a very complex sector. It needs a lot of partnerships, a lot of collaborations to actually make it work. But this is a most important factor of our overall, what do you call the, the, the socioeconomic canvas, which needs to be addressed right now with 
the appropriate use of technology. Uh, so there are anonymous questions. I'm getting it. How is IoT beneficial in analyzing mastitis from milk? I'll write this question for you. Okay, I have to sort of possibly get back to you with as well. So sort of these are these sort of sort of sort of you can say use cases I keep on seeing which are happening in the dairy space, but exactly what are the data parameters they use to analyze mastitis? I have to just do a bit of research on my end and actually get back to you. So if you can just connect with me offline, I think I should be able to so, sort of address that. But I means I, I am not in the position to exactly answer your question right now. Yeah. Uh, so there is also one more question from yeah. from okay. The specific requirements of any crop is measured by sensors only. Oh, uh, okay. So say typically if we look at a farm cycle, right from the sowing stage to the when the crop matures and is almost you can say the ready for ready for harvesting. What are the typical factors which mostly affect the health and growth of the plant? Is the pH factor, NPK factor, temperature, humidity, and ambient light? These are mostly the space that IoT is playing in the current scenario. And as I'm, as I'm mentioning, not much work is happening in the regular agriculture or horticulture commodity space more work is happening in the plantation of cash crops. So that's where these sensors are pretty easily available. So there is no issue of availability, but there is an issue of capex. Sometimes we get inquiries from enterprises, but the costing that we are eventually being able to work out is not still making what you called uh, the business ROI justifying that. So as I was trying to mention the issues and challenges, still there is a CapEx issue which is bugging because these products are not available in the market in scale. Almost every order has to be custom made with procurement of sensors. So that makes the cost, cost high. But these are typically the type of uh, parameters which are measured easily by IoT devices. And I think for any agronomist or any plant specialist, these are important data tools for taking proactive decisions. Uh, okay, so there is one last question we shall take. Yeah, uh, most This of, is also most anonymous. This is in India where a small and marginal farmers occupy the maximum part of the agriculture community. How is IoT beneficial? Ah, okay, so it is sort of actually sort of it has the both sides to it. Of course, the factor that you are trying to highlight is that uh, how will they be able to afford the cost of it? That is true. That is a ground reality. But on the other hand, these small and marginal farmers are most vulnerable. They are most vulnerable in terms of paste. They are most vulnerable in terms of lack of yield in a farm cycle and they, they get ruined. So early prediction, early sensing is most, most useful for the small and marginal farmers, but can they afford it today? No. So that's why I think the FPOs as an enterprise over a period of time, still I think the FPO as a sector is in a nascent stage. Now just the farmers are forming those FPOs as a unit, still there are operational issues, they are struggling with accounting, they are struggling with business processes, compliance, regulatory requirements with the ROC. So still it's a, it's a journey, nothing will happen overnight, but I think the most requirement is with the small and marginal farmers because they need to mitigate their risks more. But if you frankly ask me whether the overall environment is ready to support them, I would say no because of the cost factor and the lack of telco infrastructure in those remote locations. So we have a long way to go, frankly. There are use cases happening, mostly in the cash crops. It's not coming to the commodity space where most of the small and marginal farmers are, are there. But it is possible. It can make a world of difference if we can make it affordable for them. That's it.
I hope uh, they all have got their answers. And uh, we have no more questions for now, sir. So uh, let's conclude the workshop and uh, we shall meet again. Thank you thank so much. Thank you. Sir. Thank you so much, Ami. Thank you thank and so thanks much. all. Thank you all the attendees also for being there and listening to the uh, Mr. Tezivesh Bandopadhyay. Okay, sir.